So, hi guys, we are back, Alex and Thomas, um, today we talk about integrations from Google, so integrations of Google products into BigQuery, and we have now three videos about that topic, we're starting with Google Ads today, and so what do we need to basically get the raw data inside BigQuery, what kind of credentials you have to check, and um, yeah, what could basically be some... Issues, issues you run into and mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned and um, have fun hello everybody <laughs> Hi, this is again Alex and Thomas um, and today, as we said, we are talking about uh, connections from other Google products and yes. one of the main advantages um, we have using the Google Cloud Platform environment is that um, the connectivity to other Google products is quite good and that's um, yeah, one of the main advantages we see um, and that's why today we talk about how to integrate um, other services like Google Ads, like Google Analytics, um, yeah. So Alex, let's start with uh, Google Ads. Yes. How do I do that? <laughs> yeah, so Google Ads, so you, uh, you can directly in your BigQuery um, uh, project or GCP project, you can um, just clicking on transfer data um, and then you can already, uh, when you have read access to your Google Ads account or to the Google Ads account you want to connect, um, you can then, yeah, uh, doing the settings. Um, for that, you need to, for sure, set the custom ID so that you get can get from the from the from your Google Ads account, um, and then some other stuff. For example, the refresh time. So, uh, how often you want to get the new data? I think we use always daily, um, as far as I know. Um, here, but for example, you also already have to check one thing. Uh, we had in some projects the pr um, problem when you set the wrong um, day, uh, the wrong time uh, in the day uh, when it's getting uh, should getting refreshed. Mm -hmm. Then you get not the data from yesterday. Then you're getting the day um, just from yesterday, the day before. Okay. Um, so, so what was then the wrong setting? So what did we that do there? The time was too early. I think ah, okay. you said. So, so. Uh, I think currently we have European time or Berlin time 6 a.m. That should okay. work. Before I think it's too, too, too early that you don't get the data from this. Exactly. I think what you all always should keep in mind when you have European, like uh, in Germany, like summertime, um, UTC is two hours away. Mm -hmm. So it's basically 4 a.m. in the morning. Google also needs some, uh, also some time to prepare the data. So 4 a.m. is already quite early then, right? So the, 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 the more you go to midnight, yeah, the higher the probability is that data will not be there or is not be prepared yet. Um, so yeah, with 6 a.m. Uh, European summertime, um, it's, it's, it's working quite good. Um, and normally also for the whole transformation which happens afterwards in your like data warehouse, BI system, whatever, that should be yeah, enough time that data is ready by seven or by eight in the morning then yeah. when people are starting to work. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then for sure you have to select your data set. Um, there you for sure have to be um, assured that it's in the same region as your other data sets. But we are basically just checking that the name is fitting and so on, but the rest is fine then. Um, yeah, and then the refresh window. Um, I'm not sure if you can explain it in a good detail. Uh, so I know that the refresh window, the default is always seven days mm -hmm. um, when you don't set anything. And as far as I know, because sometimes the, sp the spent data and so on coming later for some days before, and then it's refreshed um, for, for seven yeah. days. What Google is doing is um, that every day they also change measurements of uh, basically campaigns which were there before, so the days before. Yeah. And that's why you have this refresh window, um, this, uh, how it's called, refresh window? Refresh yeah, window. refresh window. Um, that you not only get the data from yesterday, but that you also get the data from basically the days before which got changed. 
So what you have to keep in mind is that Google is basically then um, pushing like the new data for seven days inside your table. Um, and at the end, you need to create a view. Now, the view is already there, right? Yeah, yeah. The view is already there that you only basically get the latest event of that particular campaign for that particular day. So what you need to keep in mind is you have two dates. You have one date for when was this campaign basically live. So um, let's say 1st of uh, May, basically that campaign had 1000 clicks. But you get this data from the 1st of May or the 2nd of May, you get the same data 3rd of May, 4th of May, 5th of May, and so on. Yeah? And if something is changing, that changes over time. What you need to do is only taking basically this last push from the API, like this last event, because um, only that data will be yeah, as correct as it can be at that particular point. Um, and therefore you have the view inside um, basically your data set. You said creating the data set, but the data set actually is getting auto-created, correct? But I think you can give it a name. Yeah, you can give it a name. You can, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Good, never did that. So the moment you basically create the transfer, there will be a data set which is basically auto-created, but uh, I didn't know that you can yeah. also create it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can uh, maybe you can also say auto generate, but at least you can also select one of the data sets. I think maybe it needs to be empty that I'm not sure, but I yeah. know ah, I mixed it up with, uh, with Universal analytics. analytics. Yeah, okay. so yeah. sorry guys, um, of course, um, uh, you need to give it a name and then, um, yeah, the data will be there. What about what can we say first of all to say it again because that was coming a little bit short about the credentials we need. Yes, so um, you need read access to the Google Ads customer ID. So you can always add one customer or account in Google Ads to your BigQuery um, or to one data set in BigQuery. For sure, you can add a lot of Google Ads uh, customers if you want. If you have multiple um, where you track your or um, yeah, manage your, your marketing. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so read the, access. The, the user which is setting up the transfer in GCP with his Google account or her Google account, they need to have also read access to that account ID, customer ID inside Google Ads. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so and then maybe yeah, also to quickly, especially when you look then the first time in, your, in the raw data for Google Ads, you see a lot of tables and a lot of views. Uh, you're getting a little bit what's, what's happening here. Um, so yeah, so normally, or yeah, the way how Google Ads is delivering the data is that they send the most important KPIs, spend, impressions, and so on and so on, clicks, um, and that then divided by different um, dimensions. Um, yeah. And then you can choose for sure something like campaigns, ads, and so on are the most important ones. Um, and then you have to choose also fitting the name of the table. You have them to choose which table. We can, we can put actually some of the main tables we are using in the description maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, that gives you a little bit help of um, like where to look. I think in terms of structure, there are three groups of tables, correct? There are the normal tables, there are the P tables, mm -hmm. is it called P underscore, mm -hmm. I think, I think so. and you have the views. Yeah. What was the difference between normal tables and the P tables? Mm, yeah, I'm also not sure. Is it, uh, there are normal tables? Uh, I know the p-tables and I know the views, but I'm not sure about the normal We will put it in the comments. We will, we will check that. Um, the views I explained already, um, that's basically deduplicating um, your, your, your rows. Um, and the normal tables and the p-tables, um, mm -hmm. I'm actually not sure no. at the moment. So yeah, then there's one important thing, uh, are the um, load uh, of, the, of history data. So when you're starting, you get the date of the last 30 days or, or 90 days. Um, I'm not quite sure what's, um, what's the starting point, but you can get it back to, no, you, I think you have to always define the history window. No? Yeah. Uh, so you got just get the data from today and, or yesterday maybe, and then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go so normally the it's because basically, uh, yeah, I don't know, seven days then. If you have a ah, history okay, window okay. of seven days, it mm. would be seven days at that, at, yeah. at that point. Okay, that's good also. Yeah. yeah. So and then you have to set, um, schedule a backfill, as it's called in BigQuery. Yeah. Um, and they have to also to be a little bit um, careful about that because you can just choose six months. Um, I think and you also have to check, but that we can also, or I can show it in the screencast, 
um, because yeah, which date you have to choose when you're adding new data to the from the from the from yeah from the past and so on. It's not so easy. Um, but yeah, so important is you can just get the in one backfill the data of the last six months. Yeah, and um, I think the if you would like to have the get if you would like to get the data till the 30s in the backfill i think you have to select till the first or the 29th right i always have to check it uh, yeah I, I, it's I definitely I, I can tell you it's definitely not the day you want to have it's <laughs> either one day after or one day before yeah. or we will we will show it probably right there yeah. somewhere and somewhere. Um, if it's one day after or one day before uh, that you really have the date you need otherwise it could be that one day is missing or you have basically one day twice inside um, which would not be a problem with the view yeah. Um, yeah what 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 do you need to check when you do history load issues basically do not issues what do you need to check <laughs> if you basically load the history values um, mm. at the end uh, I, I can say it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that it takes quite a long time right? yeah. I um, think for one day 30 minutes so it starts with a backfill every 30 minutes I think yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to basically um, the 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 amount of data is not the problem here. Um, Google Ads say okay for every history load for every day we take thirty minutes. So um, when you schedule that for let's say sixty um, days for the last sixty days, it will start immediately, and then the next day will basically start. Um, 30 minutes later mm -hmm. and then 30 minutes later and so on so you can do the math yourself so you can do one and a half months per day yeah so um, if you need that quite quick uh, quite in time then we always recommend to make the backfill on a monthly base yeah that you say okay today I backfill basically um, the last month tomorrow the month before or let's make two months um, depending on how really quick you need the data but if you start basically the whole um, time range as your backfill it will start from the beginning till basically the last day but you're normally most interested in the last day and the days basically before mm -hmm. and not uh, six months before so um, it, it, it makes total sense to make this backfill in two or three like let's say um, parts so um, that you can work with the data at the end. Yeah. And there's one important thing but that we also have to check again because there's also was a change in the last weeks or days um, because let's say f some months ago um, you had the problem that some cap uh, that some campaigns from Google Ads were not imported the max performance campaigns mm -hmm. Um, but so yeah, also to give a little bit um, hint to the next videos. In one of the next videos, we are talking about um, a platform, the ETL platform we are also using, um, and there is already the fix for that. So some months ago, the API also don't give these max performance campaigns, so the spend for it, the clicks, and so on, everything you want. Um, and also in the already in the Google Ads trend or connection BigQuery was also not available these campaigns. But I know that some weeks ago um, the Google Ads integrated also these max performance campaigns mm -hmm. in their API. Um, yeah, but is it now inside the Google Ads transfer? <laughs> but we will check that. I think um, so because yeah, uh, because both so the ETL platform and the transfer was not capable of. Now I know that the platform is capable of to do it. I think also the so Google Ads should there, be inside the transfer. But I'm not sure that we can also then check. Yeah, we will. We will definitely um, check it um, after the recording, and um, and maybe so. Yeah, what we did then because we we realized it in one or two projects, I think, um, that we then so and if they are still not there, what can be, um, then you can do a Google Ads um, G sheet or uh, yeah G sheet Google sheet um, connection. So there you also need read access, I think, to the G Sheet, uh, to the Google Ads account connected with the G Sheet and then get all the campaign data and at least the most important data you need from the campaigns. Um, and then you have to add it to your BigQuery and then you can union it and so on and just put it in the same structure. So a little bit more effort, but if you need these performance campaigns, max performance max campaigns, 
and they are still not in the transfer, and then yeah. you did it like But that. it will probably only be uh, fixed, which is for quite limited yeah. amount of time, Maybe. if not already been yeah, fixed, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, what else do we need to say? Um, f first of all, we talked about this like um, refresh window of seven days. Mm -hmm. I think normally we have 30 days, which is the maximum. Yes. Um, it's a lot of additional data, obviously. So because every day you load like the whole 30 days look back window again into your database. So the amount of data will basically definitely grow. Um, Did you realize that sometimes still after some uh, seven days that there are some KPIs? We definitely, know? yes. So okay. we had projects where this was an issue. Um, mm -hmm. We had seven days at the beginning. And then we found out that the data was not matching to the Google Ads account. So I'm not quite sure what's really the trigger here and, and, and um, what basically drives this change of ad campaign, let's say metrics, after more than seven days. But it can be that after a while Google makes some corrections to their data. And if you have your look back window like seven days or your yeah, look back window, your mm -hmm. fresh window seven days, and Google makes a change of the data like 10 days after, your data in your data warehouse will obviously not match basically the Google um, Ads data, which is maybe not that problematic because normally we talk about some euros here. Mm. Um, I think it's also the bigger problems um, with the increasing of the amount of spend and so on, right? First of all, I yes. So. I think the biggest problem here is trust, mm -hmm. right? The moment the Ads manager sees there is a number of clicks, views, impressions, I don't know, in Google Ads, and they see in your internal analytical system, like your data warehouse, um, whatever, um, the, the numbers are not fitting, are not, 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 not matching, then they immediately think, okay, why is there a difference, right? And this is the main reason the data should be 100% correct. Mm. It will not completely change your ROAS or your, your uh, I don't know, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, CPO. Okay, yeah, so refresh uh, window we had, then the history backfill important. Um, so there, the six months and so on, and every um, 30 minutes you get a new day or it's starting a new day importing. Um, yes, and then setting up everything, but that's quite easy. There's also good documentation on Google side. Um, yes, to do it, and you need read access to your Google, to the Google Ads uh, custom ID. Yeah. 